The other systemic therapies we have are uh, biologics. And often nowadays, uh, insurers have actually recognized that these are very safe and very effective. Uh, some of the older biologic therapies we have, which are called TNF blockers, uh, and the uh, products there are adalimumab, etanercept, golimumab for psoriatic arthritis, infliximab, and sertilizumab uh, are um, quite effective. Um, they all carry black box warnings for infection and malignancy, although the risks are very small. Uh, and in fact, in registries that have followed many, many thousands of patients with psoriasis treated for uh, 10 years or more, um, it appears that uh, on average patients live longer. There's a reduction in heart attacks in patients treated with TNF blockers, uh, even though they carry those warnings for infection and malignancy. Some of the newer drugs are more targeted. They block smaller parts of the immune system, either IL-17 or IL-23. Uh, they do not have black box warnings for infection or malignancy and actually don't have a contraindication to their use in malignancy. Um, they, uh, they affect, um, uh, so, so patients born, let me start again. They affect very small parts of the immune system uh, and we have examples in nature of patients who are born deficient in some of the molecules that we're blocking so we know what to expect in the way of side effects. Uh, patients born with deficiencies in IL-17 develop chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. They don't get more cancers. They don't get more heart attacks. They don't get other serious opportunistic infections. They get yeast infections, uh, fungal infections. So, um, uh, you know, and those are so easy to treat with medica medications like fluconazole that we don't have to uh, worry as much about side effects. Um, the oldest of those drugs is only on the market probably a little more than f five years or around five years. Uh, that's secukinumab. Um, uh, and sure enough, the side effect that's emerged with that has been one, and that's yeast infections. Uh, the uh, other agents in that class is, um, and, and secukinumab blocks IL-17A. The other agent in that class, ixekizumab, also blocks IL-17A. There are different IL-17s. Um, and uh, bradalumab blocks the receptor for all of them. So, uh, and again, with all three of those agents, the side effect that's emerged has just been yeast infections. There are um, some new drugs on the horizon that block IL-17 A and F, primarily bimekizumab, uh, and um, hopefully that'll be on the market in two years, and the data so far looks excellent, both in terms of side effects and in terms of effectiveness. It appears to be highly effective for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. And the side effect, again, that we're seeing is monilial infections, yeast infections. Likewise, the IL-23 molecules are uh, uh, very targeted. Uh, and what happens with IL-23 is when you block IL-23, it appears that um, uh, IL-23 is necessary to cause a cell, the Th17 cell, to make IL-17. So when you block IL-23, not only are you reducing IL-17, but it seems that those cells actually disappear, uh, and it takes a while for them to reconstitute themselves. So by blocking IL-23, we very effectively treat psoriasis, but also the remissions are quite long. Uh, and for that reason, the IL-23s can be given as infrequently as every three months, uh, which is a big advantage, and in fact, you know, it gives patients almost as normal a life as they can get. Um, uh, you know, it's every three months is, every, is four, four injections a year, and patients are clear virtually the entire year. So uh, that's a, uh, those have been a serious breakthrough uh, in psoriasis. They have the drawback in there somewhat slower. It takes a while to get to their peak effect. So when we use the IL-23 blockers, we have to tell patients, you know, they peak actually around 16 weeks or even after. Um, but, uh, but you usually see some benefit within four weeks, so, uh, so they're not that slow. Uh, um, uh, but once you get there, uh, patients remain clear for years, uh, as long as they continue the injections uh, every two or every three months, depending on which drug. Um, 
Uh, Tildrakizumab uh, is given every three months. Rizankizumab every three months. Uh, Guselkumab is given every two months. Uh, and those are the three drugs we currently have. There's one called Mirakizumab, which will be coming in um, uh, in hopefully uh, another year or so. Um, uh, with all of these, the side effect profile appears to be excellent. There are no black box warnings for the IL-23 blockers.